six days to go until the first test. We cannot wait. Uh, they are here, and what a show we have got in store tonight. Titus O'Reilly, Dave yeah, Chris yeah. Frederick, is going to join us on the show. Rodney Marsh, one of the Australian yeah. blokes, is going to join us on the show. And not too far away, the Australian skipper, the 47th Test Captain of Australia, Pat Cummins, is going to join us on the show. Yeah. Guys, you get through here for the brewery fresh Carlton draft. Mate, mate, stop. What a week it's been. What a week, what a week it's been. What? Well, it's been a huge week. We've had the new skipper announced last Friday. Alex Carey gets called in to make his test debut, which is magnificent. Looks like Perth's going to lose the fifth test. Don't know where that's going to be played. Maybe Hobart. They're back in the mix. Decide all. Decide Stop. All the brew are hard between <laughs> Stop. Cricket Tassie and Cricket Australia. What a week. You're missing the big one. What's happened? Warney fell off a motorbike. That's <laughs> <laughs> true, he did. Oh, oh I didn't know what to do. Oh, look, the news is good. He's all right, uh, Warney it? is making full recovery. His hair is still in ICU. So. <laughs> wow. We can only pray. God, I, lo I love Warney. Anything to meet a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> The link still go to, but he's he's he is all right, isn't he? Yeah. He's okay, I, I believe. Well, I can. I've actually got the footage of the of incident. The, the incident. Accident. This is Warney. He was riding a motorbike. He, he got trapped underneath it. Have oh, a look, no. can. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> you can. It's fairly graphic. I should have put a warning up first. But, uh, yeah, no. We're just doing. He's yeah. walked away from that, has he? <laughs> we're just doing funniest home videos tonight. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I tell you what, Mickey. You know, if you're wondering, um, so he is all right, by the way. He's okay. But the next day, he had to front up for a media appearance for a super coach. Yeah, right. And uh, you tell me if he's suffering any ill effects of the crash. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> well, that's that's great. Now I know what it's like to have sex with Warney. So that's. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> hey, but good to see him in the traditional baggy lime green chaps. That's no, it's great. No, it's great. No, it's great. Hey, crowds are going to be back. We can't wait. It's a sellout. Full capacity going to be at the Gabba day one. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. Uh, after everything we've been through, it's going to be brilliant I love to see it. the terraces packed. I love the crowds. Yep. I especially love the crowds at the Gabba. Yep, uh, they really embrace the spirit. Yep. yep. Uh, never too keen to pop on a shirt up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. Uh, this is great stuff. Oh, that's just the twelfth man mucking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the weather wall. Oh, no, look, look at the guy in the background. Give him the curators, don't we? Understand? <laughs> the England team. Isn't it fantastic? No, it's great. I love them. And here's a bit of horseplay. A bit of fun. That's in the members, by the way. <laughs> and have a look. No. And there. Yeah. That was a three act play. It's going to be. Um, <laughs> going to be so much great jousting in the crowd, of course, because whenever the English come out here, we know that one of the great aspects of an English tour is the Barmy Army. 1,300 of them have come out. They've got 1,000 seats uh, for the Gabba Test. Three bays uh, are going to be um, uh, committed to the Barmy Army. They'll bring their colour and their passion, and they are fantastic for English Test cricket. Three bays. Uh, Correct. Uh, no need to run the hotspot over uh, where the Omicron uh, <laughs> strain... <laughs> The Omicron section no. of the ground will be. No. That's nice to know. But yeah, the Barmy Army, they're you know, great. They they're are great. great. And, um, you know, the, the DNA of the Barmy Army. Right. You know, the Barmy Army started in 19, I think, 94. Right. But the DNA of the Barmy Army comes from this group of supporters at the MCG in 1978. Right. Where uh, the lyrics were simple, but their message was clear. And among the keener fans that we've had are a squad of English girls here or English supporters who've even made a song up for us, haven't you? Yes, it's called We Hate You Aussies. Well, how about a rendition? Are you right? Okay. One, two, three. We, we hate you Aussies. Oh, yes, we do. We don't hate anyone as much as you. When you're not losing, we're blue. Oh, Aussies, we hate you. Oh. <laughs> Moving. <laughs> they used to play that to prisoners at uh, Guantanamo Bay, by the way. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the, the, the Gabba, you know, it's Oh, we can't wait. Day one, first test, quintessential moment in Australian sport. Oh, we have a great year. record at the no, Gabba. It's, it's, it's just one of those grounds for us. It is. It's a magical ground. And you can have your Lords, you can have your SCG, the MCG. The Gabba will always be mecca for me. Old-fashioned Aussie charm. It has something that no <laughs> other, that, uh, other grounds could only dream about, as described here by Richie Benno. <laughs> Magnificent. Straight onto the dog track. 
Mickey, they've got boxes there as well. Oh, well, they need entertainment for the lunch break. The, play the players aren't even allowed to walk they on walk it when they go back the to the track. Look at that. <laughs> That's why I love the Gabba. That is they got their priorities straight. Classic Gabba. So you never know what's going to happen, do you? This is a great thing. Where these two squads come together. The momentum is huge going into day one. I put to you that the first ball, day one at the Gabba Test, one of the great moments of Australian sport sure is. whenever it comes around. Absolutely, and it's a, it's a chance for a team to make a statement. Oh, you know what I mean? It can set you up for the series like it did in 2006 with Steve Harmison for England. First ball, the first Test match. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, England lost that series five <laughs> nil. Uh, Mate, I haven't seen I haven't seen something miss the mark by that much since I watched Cracker Jack. <laughs> um, but, well, I haven't seen something uh, miss the mark by that uh, much uh, since your last appearance on Now and Then. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I haven't seen something. <laughs> I haven't seen something miss the mark by that much since you asked Danny Minogue for a phone number. <laughs> that was a bit awkward, to be honest. Are we, are we going to take a break and no, come no, back? No. And keep it's doing this it's all nice, night. It's nice to be finally uh, left out of those sorts of <laughs> slingy matches between. Hey, can I tell you what my favourite? Have moment you got a favourite moment? Well, oh yes, it was uh, Ben Stokes getting injured. Oh, have a look. I'm not sure, oh. but I think he may have been hit on the dick. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 the first, he's the first commentator bouncer, uh, commentator ba batsman I've ever seen. Well, that's because of stump mics. Of course, yeah. right? he picked it up. Right? In yeah, the old great. days, to understand what was fully going on, you had to wait uh, for the commentators. Right. No ball call. That's hit him. And he, a nasty one. Now that wasn't on the head, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Well it, well, it kind of was. <laughs> hey, we're very lucky on this show. I'd like um, to see that on Hotspot. That would be <laughs> absolutely. It's been a huge week for Australian cricket, obviously. We're getting closer to the first test, and we've got a new captain, the 47th. Australian Test Captain was announced last Friday. What a joy it is to have Pat Cummins join us on the show. Paddy, thanks for joining us on the program, mate. Terrific to have you with us. Um, how's it settling in for you? Yeah, thanks, boys. Uh... Yeah, it's been good. It's been a big week. Um, yeah, plenty of messages uh, on the phone. I'm ready to chuck it into the Brisbane River, actually. <laughs> uh, but it's, been, it's all been nice things. Um, can't wait to start playing now and get stuck in. Well, it's the uh, debut is against England in an Ashes series. No pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think day one's a sellout, so can't wait. Plenty of, pe plenty of people want to jump on the bandwagon of the Australian skippers announcement, Sam, every single time it gets announced. Who have you heard from, Pat? Ah, uh, mate, everyone. Um, <laughs> got a nice... Uh, played some phone tag with the PM. Um, he sent a nice message. Um, yeah, plenty of messages. I, I got a couple of the boys... Well, most of the boys sent me a message. Trav Head rang me right. when I was in the middle of the... Um, you know, 10 of the other players, so... He's been copying a ribbing, biggest suck up in the team. Everyone's <laughs> uh, been lovely. Whenever playing phone tag with the PM, that means that Pat saw it and go, yeah, I'll just let I'll just it. <laughs> How, how's, how's that? A phone conversation between a man who holds the highest uh, office in the land and the Prime Minister. <laughs> so, uh, how much thought have you given, mate, to how it's going to operate when you're out there? When you've got the ball in hand and you're doing your job, how much thought have you given to how it's actually going to play out. Yeah, quite a bit. Um, yeah, everyone, you know, is trying to remind me, and I think the, the, the most important thing to concentrate on is make sure my bowling's still in, in order. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be leaning on a few of the other guys out there who have uh, a bit more experience in the tactical um, stakes than me. Um, so Steve Smith, David Warner, all the bowlers are experienced, so hopefully it'll all run pretty smoothly. Are you considering bowling yourself from both ends? <laughs> <laughs> no chance, because the wind blows down one end, so uh, I'll be firmly down that end. What about seven slips and two gullies? Is that, is that a fielding that's the set for your own bowling? 
I can't rule that out. I might want a short <laughs> leg in there, though, too. And, it, and is it true that you're now opening the batting? <laughs> <laughs> so you I'll have a look at the wicket and decide. Uh, what about referrals? I'm sorry, I'm just hanging up on this, how you're captaining and uh, running in and bowling fast for Australia. Are you going to hog all the referrals? <laughs> Will they all come <laughs> off your bowling? <laughs> Well, as a team, we get three, so I'm happy for the other ten players to take one of them. Um, <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> well, what about, Liz, what, just enough with the silly questions. Or there's some hard-hitting ones, mate. Are you a heads or tails man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never done it. Um, I suppose in Australia, because it's home ground, we've got a toss the coin, which, again, I haven't done since about under 15. Well, I'm not I'm stop instilling a lot of confidence in you. <laughs> uh, as is the tradition, you have to do background checks on any uh, incoming Australian captain. It's part of the regime now. We've done a bit of research. Uh, can I put it to you? There was an incident at university uh, involving you that you may want... Probably best if we hear it from you yep. rather than uh, in the courts. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? You, it's, this is, you're yeah. getting told off by your mother. Can you tell us, please, what happened? <laughs> yeah, it was hard-hitting um, hard journalism there, uh, Mick. Um... <laughs> yeah, there are plenty more. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um, yeah, the dean reached out to me, um, just introduced himself, and uh, yeah, I took it as a bit of an opportunity to think, well, well I've got you on the line. Any car spots up for grabs? <laughs> uh, you, because and, you had just uh, made the Australian team and you went up to the Dean and you demanded a car spot. Yep. Well, I thought it's got to have some perks. Um, <laughs> but, um, and, and you would have got away spot. with it, except you drove the Gatorade van into the... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of... Uh, so, continue with the background checks, because um, I, I believe there's an, there was... The, you've lost part of your middle finger. Is that right? My question is, is that, was that an accident involving your sister or are you a member of the Japanese Mafia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I prefer not to, not to say either way. Ah, yes, the code um, of silence. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Further part of the background check, of course, and we showed this last week. Mm. Uh, I say a dark day uh, in Pat Cummings' career, but Pat, <laughs> what's your dog's name? Norman. Well named, mate. <laughs> I mean, come on, I don't mind the all white kind of linen look, but at least have a red ball stain on your crotch. <laughs> How did you describe your leadership style? What are you aiming? What, you, what, what sort of feel is going to be in terms of you as captain? Uh, hopefully, pretty relaxed. Um, yeah, I always play my best and, and think most uh, other players play their best when it's a relaxed environment. So. Yeah, hopefully pretty tight-knit team um, and just, yeah, let everyone do their own job. I won't get in the way too much. Pat, I'm not going to um, lie. Try. I'm not going to lie, Pat. You've got to touch a Putin about you. I've just got a, a, a whiff of the Kim Jong-uns. <laughs> it's what I'm hearing, but you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, the country's right behind you, mate. It's in good hands. Well done, You're mate. a fantastic cricketer and a terrific bloke. So we wish you all the very best. Can't wait for Wednesday to roll around. Uh, to you and the team, the very best of luck. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Magnificent. Magnificent. Patrick Cummins on the show, plays his 35th test, test, the 47th test captain of Australia. We wish him all the very best. What a what a marketable commodity. What a leader that young man is. Absolutely. Mm. I, don't, I don't need to set up. It's all right. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> You just had that blank look on... No, no, yeah, right. that... Rod Marsh, not too far away. Oh, there you go. We're all very excited about we Rod are. Marsh, by the way. Right. And he was, of course, part of a, an era that was very, very successful on the field, but very, very successful off the field when it came to endorsements as well. Mm. Our skipper's playing daddy. Dougie's trumping jacks. Lily's watching telly. Rod knows how to relax. While Redders flogs antiques and Gary throws a line. Turner's getting bogeys, and Tomo's doing fine. They'll all be back next summer with runs flowing free. But there's no off-season with Brute 33. <laughs> wow. You know what I love in a fragrance? Versatility. You can, you can wear Brute while you're playing cards, watching TV, and going fishing. <laughs>
All right. a, lot of, a lot of possibilities. Maybe, yeah. maybe should have gone to the break after the pack. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> the cricket tragedy joins us on the other side of the break. The one and only Corey yes. O'Reilly. <laughs> Royal Hotel. Royal. Been there since 1888. Magnificent. Uh, and Magnificent. I've been there for most of that time. Uh, <laughs> get involved with the program any way you like through our uh, social media platforms. Uh, we've got all the big ones down there. We look forward to your feedback throughout the show. Um, we should congratulate the Perth Scorchers. The WBBL well season's been run away. Yeah. Well and they were magnificent. They built beautiful momentum through the tournament. Beth Mooney, Soap Divine, Marazone Cap, just a powerhouse outfit. They got what they deserved. Been absolutely magnificent. Beat the Strikers in the final. So WBBL done and dusted for another year. The Australians will see again later the Australian women. The BBL starts on Sunday. What a way to kick that off. The Sixers and the Stars. So that kicks off here. Going to be part, a huge part of the summer and there'll be some magnificent commentary you comment, again. You yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be a tiny, tiny part. Yeah. Fill in when the big boys are uh, doing uh, their stuff. You're, you know? yep, you're part of the team. Channel 7, you've nailed it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but we... Um, I'm sure you've played your usual hard-to-get in contract negotiations. <laughs> it's going to be a great summer, by the way. You mentioned commentary. Um, you know, you know, one of my favourite commentators, though, boys, was the great Bill Laurie. Oh, of course, mate. And of course. Yep. He, I loved Bill Laurie because it didn't matter if um, he was accurate because it, he just always made it exciting. Straight out. Oh, he's not going through it. Here it goes. He's got him. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. <laughs> Gone. Dropped. Gone. Oh, how's that for action? <laughs> <laughs> He's the master. He is. He oh, called, by the way, he, he called it as he saw it too, by the way, um, <laughs> as he did on this occasion, discussing the batting prowess of England's Phil Tuffnell. <laughs> That's the beginning of what could be a large chart. <laughs> You're going to be joking, Max. <laughs> <laughs> that is the chart, I would suggest. <laughs> He's the best. I, uh, it's interesting you mentioned Tuffnell because one of the things I love most about playing England, especially in the Ashes series, mm. is uh, looking at the state of their field. Oh, yes. Uh, which in recent times was never that great. And mm. Tuffnell, uh, being uh, one of the uh, main offenders, have a look at this oh. masterpiece. <laughs> and what? Uh, <laughs> and what? <laughs> <laughs> that has missed the mark by a mile. And this effort from Mark Elaine, I, oh, I think it stands head and shoulders above yep, the best yep. in recent efforts. Yep. This is very hard to do. Okay, Try doing this. I bet you you can't. And oopsie. No. <laughs> and oopsie again. <laughs> you could practice that for a yeah, moment. No, that's and not than be able to that's pull it off. It's going to be good to do that. Hey, so much uh, great cricket to look forward to. One man who's going to be watching at all. He's an absolute uh, cricket tragic. And a great friend of everybody here at the front bar. Please make him welcome, Titus O'Reilly. Hello, Titus. Titus. Titus, magnificent. It wouldn't be an action series show without you being part of it, so thanks for coming along and joining us. All the fun and frivolity. Hey, there was some chance this series wasn't going to get underway with the quarantine issues and the Englishmen not sure whether they wanted to be part of it. Have you got a view that... These modern players are getting a bit soft. Oh, they're really soft. I mean, uh, consider this their preparation compared to this. There was a player, Australian player called Graham Williams, who he, he's, there he is. There, his career was interrupted by the war, so he starts flying planes. He gets shot down in Libya in 1941, and he's there till the end of the war. And at the end of the war, England and Australia decide to play games immediately after the it's finished, called the Victory Tests. Yep. And so he's been out of a Nazi concentration camp, which is a lot worse than the Yarra Valley winery. That the <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot worse. <laughs> he, he's, he's been out of that for three weeks. He has to play as Australia's lead strike bowler. <laughs> and he's lost 31 kilos from wow. when he first played. So in between overs, he has to stop and drink glucose <laughs> so he can keep going. He's still got two wickets because it's the English. <laughs> So the next time your mate's saying, oh, I'm a bit tired to go out to the, to the pub tonight, go, yeah, Graham Williams, mate. Because Keith Miller, he had one photo in his house, and it's this one here. And Graham Williams, this is them walking out for the victory test. Graham Williams is the guy on the far right. You can see almost how skinny he is there. 
And Keith Miller said that when Graham came out to bat, and he scored 52 runs, uh, the crowd gave him this standing ovation, the English crowd, because they knew what he'd done the yeah. war. So that was the, p the picture that Miller decided to display to the world, which is a bit different to what our Australian cricketers today, the photos they choose to share, but anyway. <laughs> 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 you mentioned Miller. Now, he fought in the war as well. Was he in the air force? Yeah, Miller was a, a fighter pilot. There he is, a good-looking guy, oh, Miller. Oh, he is good -looking. Magnificent. And uh, he, he used to fly... He flew a lot over Germany, and Miller took nothing seriously, including the war. So once, yeah. <laughs> once they'd flown on a mission over Germany, and they're flying back, and he breaks formation because he wants to fly over Beethoven's hometown because he's a <laughs> fan. <laughs> And then, while he, so he's a proper, you know, <laughs> proper soldier. So he, he goes AWOL another time for a concert. He loved music. And he got caught and he was going to be dishonourably discharged. But the officer said, if you play for my club cricket team, I'll just forget about the whole thing. <laughs> so another time he was, when he was playing cricket, he, he for Australia, mm. he wanted to get a bet on at the races, so he lost his wicket cheaply so he could get there in between innings. <laughs> uh, perhaps my favourite one he ever yeah. did was... When he was captain of New South Wales, Sid Barnes was the 12th man. So he got him coming out dressed like this is the 12th man, carrying cigars <laughs> and drinks and deodorants and, and shaving cream and all this stuff and just did the full service. It delayed the game by about 45 minutes. <laughs> they seem like they're having fun. I heard he did not get on well with Donald Bradman. No, right. the Don and Miller always clash because Miller thought the Don took everything too seriously, including cricket. Yeah. And so there's Miller bowling there. And in one match, the Bradman was furious because Miller bounced him three balls in a row. <laughs> and the reason was it was a testimonial match. It wasn't even... <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the next week, Bradman's the selector and doesn't pick Miller for the South African tour because wow. of that. Wow. Just says, don't come. There it is. Tidus, you must be excited about the Ashes. What do they mean to you? Well, the Ashes is the greatest platform ever built for sledging. And it was from the very start. So, you know, in 1882, we beat the English at the Oval for the first time ever in the UK. And the English reacted, you know, in their normal way over the top. They were put in an obituary of the paper <laughs> saying it was the death of English cricket. Since then, we've learned English cricket dies every time it leaves its shores. But <laughs> back then, it was a big deal. Yes. And so when they came out the next year, they stayed at a place called Rupert's Wood, which is a big mansion. And Janet Clark, Lady Janet Clark, who owned it, after a social match, she burnt the bales of a social game they played, gave it to Ivo Bly as a sledge to go, there's the ashes because yes. cricket died. And there he is, Ivo Bly, there, the English cricket captain. He got her back immediately. He hooked up with the music teacher that lived in her mansion <laughs> and took her back to England <laughs> <laughs> and married her. So that's where the Ashes trophy comes from. And now it stays in England. Even when we win, it tends to stay in England. Incredible. Because the English say it's too brittle to move. And having seen English top orders... I think they don't. Thomas O'Reilly. Thomas O'Reilly. It's great to have you on the show, mate. Fantastic yes. story. Uh, great to have him with us. Don't go anywhere. Uh, there's some great characters, some great Australian legends mentioned with Titus just then. Another one's going to join us on the other side of the break. The yeah. great, the one and only Rod Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> Ashes edition of the front bar, thanks to the brewery fresh Carl Drup. Yeah. When you think legends of Australian cricket, you don't have to go too far down the list before our special guest tonight. Childhood hero. Name Bob's up. Please make him welcome the one and only Rodney Marsh. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. It's Thank a joy you. to have you on the program the week before the Ashes. It's great to have you here. You don't know that yet, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of it. We have some younger viewers who may not uh, remember Armash, uh, the player. So let's have a look at the highlights, whether it be bat in, bat in hand or, or the gloves behind the stumps. Ronnie, did you always want to be a keeper? Yeah, I reckon I did. Uh, from about age eight, I right. determined I was going to be a wicket keeper because you're in the game the whole time. That's what I like about it. And the batting, I mean, you're, an, you're one of the sort of classic... Oh, I used to love it when oh. you came to the crease because you knew there was going to be fireworks, even in the middle of a dour session. You, you weren't there for a haircut, were you? You liked to get on, <laughs> you, you, you liked to get on with it. 
I was there for a good time, not necessarily. <laughs> Was that the way you always played your cricket? When you see the ball hit the ball, was that was that always coming up the ranks the way you played? Yeah, yep. and I, I, when I first started playing, I could actually bat a bit, but then I started to think about it. And <laughs> yep. yeah. After that, I became very ordinary, I thought. So, three, three-time Centurion, 355 test dismissals, 96 tests. <laughs> was there an innings that you played? Is it, if it, When you think about... Your greatest test, the one you're most proud of, is there one that automatically springs to mind? Oh, probably the centenary test yeah. because yeah. it was such an important game for for everyone. We, I think we, and, well, uh, we might get to that. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a minute. How, how did uh, how did you get the nickname Iron Gloves? Which, let's be honest, isn't a great ringing endorsement <laughs> for for a keeper. How did that come about? Well, I think Ian Chappell was the first one to coin it, shall yeah. we say? <laughs> Uh, and then the English press got hold of it yeah. uh, pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I had to work pretty hard to get rid of that. But why, why did Ian think that Iron Gloves was an appropriate nickname for you, Because Rob? every time the ball hit my gloves, it clanged out. <laughs> <laughs> Said it made a hell of a noise, well, you reckon? Yeah. You must have had a great relationship with him. The, the, he spent a lot of time, he and Greg spent a lot of time alongside you in that Amazing slip cord. And yeah, you must have had a great relationship. After you stopped calling me Iron Gloves, <laughs> oh, yeah. I got on quite yeah. well with him, actually. Yeah, right. Still yeah. do, yeah. 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 Can I ask you about the, the wicket keeping position is so different to every other position in the field. Can you take us through the, the training specific to you know, the requirements of that position, Rod? What did you have to do? Well, you had to, I think you had to find rhythm. That was it's, Cricket's all about rhythm, sport's all about rhythm. And, uh, you know, I mean, fitness-wise, you didn't really have to run marathons because you didn't do that out there. But you had to have strong legs and good balance. And I did a lot of squats when I was a... Squats? Uh, yeah, I, I did a hell of a lot of squats. Like how many? Do you remember what I'd do 600 a day in the... Same, time. same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. Big powerful, you're a big powerful. You, you, did you, you go did. through some strides? Doing yes, yep. yes, I split many a pair of pants. I was quite happy when that crimpoline stuff came in because that <laughs> stretched with my right. ample what, legs. What are you doing during a net session? So net session, people are bowling and there's no need for the keeper. There's nets yeah. back there. Where are you? Well, I'm bowling as well. Right, I settled down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Did you, did you, did your mother want you to be a cricketer? No, she didn't. She, God bless her, she wanted me to be a, a, a pianist. A pianist? Yes, a pi pianist. Well, <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what, uh, cricket's game was classical music's uh, loss there. Um, <laughs> there you are. There, your, the, your nickname was Iron Fingers, but... <laughs> Were you, were, you any, were, you, were you any good? Were you any good? No. So, no. Useless. Right, yeah. Can't play, I cannot play a note now. No. So there's one in front of you and somebody says, you know, a bit of... No. You know, no. No idea. That's it, right? Which is no. really a lot of years yeah. wasted. Right. <laughs> so you, you mentioned the centenary test. It's one of the most iconic games of cricket of all time. Unbelievable. Um, you made a, a hundred. You, you, Rick McCosker was central to all of that. I mean, it's one of the most endearing and enduring stories of Australian cricket. Not the fact that he got a busted jaw off the bowling of Bob Willis, but the fact that he came Mikoska. back, saddled up. What, what sort of regard did you have for Rick McCosker at the time, Rod? Oh, I mean, it's funny. I never thought he wouldn't come out, but I never thought he would come out, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no way that he was fit enough to bat. You're on the cusp of a, of a century here, aren't yeah. you? Or thereabouts. So yeah. it was important for him to do that. Well, it wouldn't have mattered, would it? I mean, it would have, if he'd have got hit, hit in the head again, I mean, I'd much rather have been 95, not out. Yeah. No, I would have taken the again. ton. <laughs> I, would, I, I, I would have if you're wondering, let him take one. If you're one wondering how far modern medicine has come, let's just point out the fact that a man, man Rick McCoss got a broken jaw and the, and the medical treatment at the time was a bandage. <laughs> And, and but, but yeah. it was very controversial. The next day, out the front of the MCG, there was an anti-bandage protest. Um, <laughs> and it was very, very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, sorry, when Johnny Lever was bouncing him, were you, were you a bit filthy with him or was it all love and... No. You know, no? Well, I mean, at Lever's pace, he wasn't going to hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> I think the greatest uh, endorsement uh, a sportsman in this country can get is having a song written about him. Yeah. And you are in that rarefied air. And a song was written by Smokey Dawson, the great Smokey Dawson, yep. about yep. you, the great man, Marshy. He's a champion wicket keeper. He's a hero from the West. He's the only wicket keeper who ever 
rapper called a streaker. He's a number one, he's a son of a gun, he's a hero from the West. Yeah. You, know, you would have uh, popped that on in the boudoir on the odd occasion. <laughs> 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 oh, my kids love that. They really do. They, yeah. Uh, oh, there's a they lyric. Play it every Christmas if they can. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lyric to that song, uh, Rodney. He's the only wicket keeper who ever caught a streaker. Can you can you explain that lyric? Yeah, I can. I can. We're playing a one day game in uh, at Birmingham, I reckon, against the Poms, and uh, Mike Gadding uh, batting. And I dropped two of the easiest catches you've ever seen. I mean, they were both off Terry Aldman, little faint edges straight to me, and I, I dropped them. I ungloved them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was got angry, but I didn't show it much. Um, and this guy ran on, a streaker ran on the field. I knew the police wanted him. We've got the so I went after him, and I actually caught him and held him in custody until the, <laughs> the policeman came. Look at this. You, you, you look like you're bringing down a wildebeest on the Serengeti. <laughs> after, after you caught him, Rod, did you throw him in the air? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I tell you what did happen. Richie Benno's commentary was yeah. fantastic. Can we have a look at this picture here? I'm pretty sure that's day three because <laughs> cracks are starting to appear. <laughs> I'm very proud, that's right. That's Hundreds <laughs> crack joke. <laughs> well done. Hey, well um, done. You're part of a team that uh, had some great players alongside you, one of the great players in there. And uh, I put to you, uh, Sam, mm. that, that Rod Marsh was part of the most iconic duo ever. Marsh and Lily? Yeah. Oh, no, what about yeah. Adele and Matt Doran? <laughs> <laughs> They're both good. No, Rodney, 95, it still holds... The, uh, the court marsh bowl Lily still holds this day as the... As the um, 95 dismissals is the most ever in Test group. What was it like? What was it like keeping the Dennis? Well, it was good, obviously, because <laughs> he, presented, <laughs> he, he presented me with a few catches. But the other thing was that, you know, I was lucky enough to be that close to the bloke that all of his peers thought was the best fast bowler in the world at the time, and I'm sure he was. And I think he's the best fast bowler that I've ever seen uh, play for Australia. How did he handle it if you dropped one? Um, well, you didn't drop too many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, look, I would have been probably 140 if I'd caught them all. But, yeah. Do you remember and the first time... Uh, could I just yeah. say, it, it, keeping to Lily and Thompson yeah. uh, together, I mean, it's just there's no more iconic opening partnership in Australian history. To, have, to be that close to it for so long, that, that it just must be insane for you. It was a hell of a lot better than batting against them, put it that way. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because at least he had an extra 30 yards, particularly with Tomo. Um, but batting against Tomo, as we had to in Shield cricket yeah. in those days, that was... I mean, I understand why people were frightened to bat against him because, I mean, I was. I was absolutely frightened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got to talk about uh, Headingley. Now, this is an interesting episode in Australian cricket because uh, at one stage the odds were 500 to 1 that the Poms uh, could win. In 1981. And in 1981. And you managed to get on. You and Dennis Lilly, I believe, if according to... Well... If you can re believe what you read. Yeah. Got on at 500 to 1. What was your involvement in that betting stick? I never placed a bet. OK, thank you. <laughs> just, uh, you never placed the bet, but no. were you a recipient of, of uh, monies <laughs> well, flowing I, from said bet? I can, <laughs> honest, I can honestly say I never placed the bet, nor did Dennis. But our bus driver... <laughs> And that's, that's just the that's truth. The, that's just yeah. the truth. Yeah. yeah. yeah who, how'd the bus driver get the money, Rod? Well... Can I ask how much money? <laughs> like, what were the bets? Yeah, Dennis had ten quid uh -huh. on it, and I had five. Okay. Uh, Dennis wanted to put fifty on, and I wouldn't allow him. Right. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. He would have yeah. pulled it. Oh, anybody who's played it would have been an underarm, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, get, we'll get to that. A anyone who's played a bit of cricket and has played with keepers obviously knows how badly their hands have been damaged. Keeping a, 
I mean, you obviously did a prep, bit of prep, and those fingers look okay. So that's you, the you? end of the piano playing days, <laughs> isn't it? How did, you, how did your hands get through by the end of the career, Rod? Were they okay? Yeah, good. Yep. Um, but, I mean, prevention is better than cure. That yeah. was the theory I worked on. But if you got one early in the summer, uh, and all you had to do was get a little bruise, and that it was hell for the rest of the summer. But okay. you had to find a way of trying to protect them. I, so... But yeah, keeping yeah. to Tomo yeah. all day, is this wear and tear? I mean, those, that ball is thumping into your hands. It gets softer as it gets older. <laughs> the ball. Are we yeah. still talking about the ball? <laughs> <laughs> I've just got to clarify what's going on here. Uh, yes. uh, you've lost complete control of this show. <laughs> oh, no, no. Hey, uh, we saw, Rodney, we saw the Brute commercial earlier, by the way. You were very marketable. Oh, um, yes, of and, of course, as a team, it was a matter of time before companies uh, would come calling for you individually, and it resulted in this memorable print ad. What does Rod Marsh do with his Vaseline petroleum jelly? <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's like a, I want to know, but I also don't want to know. <laughs> right, Ronnie, can you tell us about this, this print ad? What do you remember of it? Um, I don't remember a hell of a lot of it until more recent times when someone at the golf club <laughs> brings it up every year. I get That goes around every year. It's just, it's like Easter or... <laughs> it just keeps on it's coming funny, up. Rod Marsh dresses up in a, in a, you know, in a, in a white robe yeah. and a, holding a tub of jas Vaseline. Yeah, yeah. You know, he gets, a, he gets a paid for it. You do it, you get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine line. That was how Rod turned up tonight, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rodney, there's so much stuff we want to talk to you about. Let's get a break out of the way. Don't you go anywhere. There's going to be more with Rodney Marsh, one of the all-time greats in Australian cricket. On the other side of our Ashes special from the Brewery Press Garden Road. Storm and its fury broke today Crushing hopes that we cherish so dear Clouds and storms will in time pass away The sun again will shine bright and clear RACQ Foundation rebuilds the heart of Queensland communities Membership makes all the difference Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in all of us. That craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Lightly sparkling. Water with more wow. Uh, hey, mate, uh, what have you got in here? Oh, uh, just a few empties. You do know they don't recycle drink containers if you put them in a plastic bag, don't you? You're kidding. Even if I put them in the recycling bin? Nope. Everything inside me will end up in landfill. Oh. So don't bag your containers. Set them free. Too easy. Set your containers free at a local refund point or toss them loose in your recycling bin. On your champ!
greatest minds. Release the chaser. The chase. Weekdays at 5 on 7. Thousands of dollars in gifts, tens of thousands in cash, and millions of points. Get set to win big with the Sunrise 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. The Front Bar is brought to you by McCain Pub Style Chips. These chips are the main event. And up you get on the uh, massage table, and we thought, oh, he's going to die. No, no. Here it is, underneath the Southern Cross I stand, and he would lead this song. And I, I just, the, the feeling, the heart uh, for that song and what it meant for the team in Australia will live in my memory forever. So they're the things, you know, that I will always think of when I think of Rod Marsh. Dennis Lilly remembering his great mate. So it's become iconic and it's been passed down through the generations, the poem at the end of the day. But is it true? Did you write that? <clears throat> no. Goodness gracious me. So, so it is written in some... <laughs> it's written, it is actually written in some places that you're inspired by Henry Lawson uh, and poetry and you wrote that. No. Ian Chappell had a mate um, that gave him that ditty when he was playing club cricket in England <laughs> and uh, it just stuck with me and I repeated it a couple of times. I like the way it ended, actually. That was part of it, but that's... Not for television. <laughs> <laughs> so, you must uh, be very proud that it's become such an important part of the mm. locker room, the Australian yeah, locker room. But it's I a mean, great tradition. It, it's a fantastic tradition, but it, I mean, I was the first one to do it, only because Ian had told me what it what it was, yeah. and uh, I mean, there was a, it was good just belting it out, but. It's a shame it wasn't set to music, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know where it's going to go, but was there an intention at some stage that this would become part of the kind of post-game traditional reaction? Well, I think when I retired, someone said, well, well who's going to do that when we right. win a test match? And yep. I said, well, what about Border? He's a pretty good player. He's going to be around for a while. So Border got it and then Border gave it to Boone, I think. Did yep. he? I'm not sure yep. where he, it went from there. He, but yep. um, And I think Smokey Dawson did it. <laughs> It's amazing, hey, wasn't it? It's, uh, it's suggested that you used to like singing it in your underpants. And I was <laughs> imagining what that would be <laughs> like. And I thought, well, maybe it was something like this. Uh, <laughs> are you about to burst into song at this particular point? Well, they are not underpants. That's a jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. Pardon me, and I stand corrected. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and, that, and that's on a rest day. So we're very, very weird. Uh, it, is, it is amazing to have you on the show. By the way, during your playing days, uh, Rodney, you were um, very, very accessible to the media. And as we see here, you are happy to be interviewed anywhere, anytime. <laughs> I suppose you could say you've got three years, maybe five years left in the game, if you stretch it a bit, playing at the top for Australia. You have to make these last few years pay. I'm going to have to try and make them pay somehow because you know, I believe I've given up enough time um, so far to warrant some reward from the game some way. And if, if you know, I can get this reward, well, then by all means, I'm going to take it. I'll be doing sure not to. <laughs> What was I doing? <laughs> I was watching your face while you were watching that. It's almost like you can't believe you did that. I can't. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, it, how could you let a press man into the shower? <laughs> With a camera crew. I don't know, but immediately after the interview, he got into his robe. <laughs> and the Vaseline and shot another commercial. Shot I another... put the Vaseline on, didn't I? Hey, Rodney... It, it, how dangerous is it going into an Ashes campaign to underestimate the opponent? A lot of the pre-series press has been about this England camp is, is on the way down, they're not going to be up for the fight, they're no good, worst team they've seen for years. How dangerous is it to expect that to be the oh, Look, I don't think the players would be expecting that at all. I mean, I think uh, if they get it right, they'll probably win. Yeah. Um, if the Poms get it right, they'll probably win. You know, yeah. it's just... It ebbs and flows, a series over five test matches, and, you know, I think it's important to get a good start in a series like this, and maybe we won't get a start at all if it keeps mm. raining in Brisbane, but, uh, yeah, look, it's important to, to get the early blows in, I think, uh, in any fight. So. Yeah, of course. And what? this is... It's a real fight. They always are. They're always good series. Yeah. What's your feeling on a fast bowler may making the office of captain of the Australian team? Well, the old days, you know, they picked the best 11 and then picked the best bloke to captain it. Now they reckon they've 
pick the best 11 now and they'll... He's the bloke they've chosen the captain, and I think, you know, he'll be good. I mean, I can't see any reason why he wouldn't be good. He's a hell of a good bloke. Yep. A uh, hell of a good cricketer. So why wouldn't he be a good captain? I just think he'll be terrific. I read between the lines and suggest you're against that. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, <laughs> uh, you are uniquely qualified to talk about bowling. Uh, there's a couple of things I remember growing up. One is I remember when AB would have the uh, gloves on every now and then. David Boone would uh, have a bowl every now and then. Yeah, he would. And also, yep. you rolled the arm over. And in particular, this, um, this arm in 1983 at the MCG versus Pakistan. And Rodney, it's fair to say the Channel 9 graphics department... Um, oh, well, they weren't kind to you, mate. <laughs> They weren't kind to you, were they? <laughs> but, but t t and also, <laughs> you, had, you had the batsman in fear too, by the way. Right? <laughs> Have a look at him. He's absolutely terrified. <laughs> I can't understand why that was not given out. You reckon that was out? <laughs> that was out. You, you, you would have reviewed sure. that, wouldn't you? You oh, would have reviewed absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Tony Crafter was laughing at you for the appeal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, me? Yeah. No worries. <laughs> We're talking about bowling. Would you like me to take control again? No, we right. had Greg Chappell on the show last year, we by did, the way, and he did. talked, obviously, extensively about the underarm. But you were there, Rodney Marsh. You were there. Can you take us through this famous uh, moment in cricketing history? And Because you had a very unique perspective. Obviously, you are behind the stumps. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, I think they're discussing an underarm delivery there. Yeah. Uh, Trevor wanted me to go back because obviously it was going to be a very fast underarm. <laughs> but you were against it there. And I said, no, no, it's not going to be that fast. So I was saying no. <laughs> Either that or I didn't agree with it. And uh... What was happening after this in, in, immediately in the dressing room? You go in, the Australian team are there. Was, was... It wasn't, we won the game, but... No one was celebrating. No, no, it was pretty... Uh... No, it wasn't good. So it, wasn't the... good. it wasn't good for the game. So the vision shows that you were displeased and against it. Are you, are you proud of the fact that you're on the right side of history? I mean, nobody stands by that. And it was a, it was a dark day for Australian cricket, and you clearly weren't in agreement with that. Yeah, look, I mean, you do what you do at the time um, because that's what you think. Yep. And uh, that's what I thought, and that's obviously what I did. I mean, I don't remember much about it, really. It was yeah. a hell of a hot day, I remember that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> can you believe... I think I got 18 not out too, right. which probably got us over the line. Yeah, that, well, that, that, yeah. yeah, that was the yeah. takeaway from the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 did you, did, did you have any? Did you have any idea that it would be as big as it became at the time? No, I think uh, Sandpaper Gate was a bit bigger, wasn't it? I'm yeah. not sure, really. Uh, I wouldn't have thought no, so. It was pretty big. I, I think this was pretty, pretty, big. Big. It's pretty big. And uh, there was a lot of dissatisfaction with the decision to uh, bowl the underarm. Uh, that w dissatisfaction was expressed uh, s uh, clearly and succinctly uh, by Richie Benno, expressed the mood of a nation. We keep reading and hearing that the players are under a lot of pressure and that they're tired and jaded and perhaps their judgment and their skill is blunted, well, uh, perhaps they might advance that as an excuse for what happened out there today. Not with me, they don't. I think it was a very poor performance. One of the worst things I have ever seen done on a cricket field. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. There's no one like him. You're such a magnificent cricketer for Australia, wholehearted, everything on the line. You live through, you know, the, the, the split, the fork in the road, the traditional and the World Series cricket. Were you always going to sign up with Kerry Packer and WSC? I was the last to sign. Right. So uh, why did it take you some time? Well, I probably had the most to lose, seeing as that Greg and Ian and everyone else that could be captain of Australia had uh, signed up. And yep. if I hadn't have signed, I'd, I've got no doubt I would have been captain of Australia. Uh, but what would you rather be, captain of Australia or play with your mates? Well, we should ask you that question. Yeah, well, I'd rather play with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd rather be captain, Rodney, I'd say. <laughs> I, well, I could have been the worst captain in the world. <laughs> Jeez, no, I don't think so. No, hey, no, no. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was watching this live. Uh, it's an iconic moment. Uh, I believe Duncan Fernley has a lot to answer for. <laughs> As you step <laughs> down the wicket 
Did that take you by surprise? What well, was your immediate reaction? We lost that game by one run, seriously. And that was going for four or six, wasn't it? <laughs> that it was, was clearly out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, Had that ever happened to you before? No, no, no. And look at this, how you try and repair the bat. These days they'd run another ten out. <laughs> you know? Jeff Howe. You've got that. That's rocketed oh, that was, off the bat. Was, yeah. So... You were stiff. You were desperately unlucky. Hey, Rodney, we've got a segment on our show here um, that we love as much as anything on this show. It's called Rewrite the Rules. Thanks to Carlton Zero, when we dive back into a part of your career that was of significance, of course. What do you got, Mickey? I don't think there was a more popular sportsman in Australia at the time than you and in that era. Uh, so beloved. And then this oh. happens. <laughs> Rod Marsh, the new head of England's Cricket Academy. His job, to make England the best team in the world within six years. I think it's important for the game of cricket that uh, you know England is strong and uh, if I can do my bit to help that, then uh, so be it. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Because they went on, England went on, and she pretty much started the, their Institute of Sport or their Cricket Academy, and then they went on to have a very successful period yeah. uh, of English cricket. It was, uh, it was a hell of a good job. I mean that, because it was, it was different. I only had one, one boss, uh, and that was a fellow called Hugh Morris, who's a very close friend of mine now. Uh, but in Australia, uh, I work for the sponsor, Cricket Australia, and also uh, the AIS, the Australian Institute yeah. of Sport. Now, try answering the three people. Mm. Not good fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and I answered the one bloke in England. They paid me well. Uh, I got everything I wanted. All that was put in writing. If he agreed with it, I got what I wanted. And it was, it was fantastic. a really good experience. And I think it made me a better coach. Uh, made me a better organiser. It made me a... Uh, I mean, and a traitor. And <laughs> well, they, did, they, they did win. I mean, again, they won four of the next six Ashes series with great. a lot of players that you helped mould into the players they became. So you yeah. went over there with a job to do, and you did it really well. They had, yeah. Well, that was that's what I, that's what I did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed doing it. I, I enjoyed working with kids. It didn't matter where they come from. I mean, mm. whether they were uh, West Indian, whether they were. Uh, English, whether they were... It didn't matter. I yeah. mean, they were kids that wanted to become better cricketers, and that's yep. that's what I enjoy. I'm sure everyone in England was thrilled with your time uh, with them because mm. it, it was absolutely, by the way, more successful than your appearance on this game show in the 19, <laughs> early 1990s. Rod Marsh, let's have a look at oh. how you handled baby John Burgess <laughs> on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Tonight, old Iron Gloves himself, Rod Marsh, Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Rodney, letter? A letter, I'll go for an R. An R. There are no R's, Rod. A D. <laughs> a D. A D for Don. A D. <laughs> no D's, Rod. Boy, jeez, good on this. Look, this is another $250 worth. Go for an L. I'm sorry? <laughs> T for T. No T. No. <laughs> Having a good time, Rod? No, I'm not, actually. <laughs> 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 Once again, you know that you know that the yeah you know, the letters yelling out the letters. That's only one part, by of course, the way. Yeah. But Rod, you're looking at that as if you can't even remember it. Don't you worry. Can't. You had <laughs> you had five quid on Colin Hewitt to win. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the spinning the wheel and landing on the money and then guessing the phrase. That's another part of, of wheel of fortune. Yeah. So let's see how Rod did at that part of the game. Wait till we find who Phil's playing. I'm back. Rodney! Unlucky, mate. I don't remember that. Why <laughs> <laughs> can you not remember well, that? We, I can't. <laughs> you, you said to Colin Hewitt, you said, I don't know. She was asking, you, do you know the phrase? You said, I don't know it. So can we put it back up yeah, there? Right. We want to write this wrong. Do you want to have another go at it, mate? Do you, <laughs> do you, uh, can you have a go at that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it now. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 good enough. Yeah, All right. There it is. Hey, mate, it's been a joy. Uh, we are blessed that people say yes to come on this show. Uh, we love just getting to meet legends of Australian sport like you. Thanks so much for coming on the program. It's been great.
Yeah. Rodney Marsh joining us on the show. What a privilege it is for having him here. Don't go anywhere on the other side of this mixed multi up there. The stories behind the moments you loved. To be told that you were considered one of the best bowlers in the world at the time, then all of a sudden you look at a bowl again, um, was bloody devastating actually. That crowd started to get behind me and then by the time we got to around 10 metres to go, they're screaming because it's the first time that I look like I might be able to deliver it for Australia. Heroes and Legends, a celebration of the 2021 Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Welcome back to the show. We've heard the name Dennis Lilly mention a bit tonight. After the show, uh, don't go anywhere. Australia's sporting heroes and legends are going to be on following us. Abby Jelmy and the great Bruce McAvaney, of course, are going to spend time with a couple of Bruce. Australian greats who have been elevated into the Hall of Fame. Dennis Lilly and Ian Thorpe amongst those. So be watching that straight after us. And, of course, uh, be on the lookout for this. Australia's T20 teams are going to wear this kit designed by WA cricket fan Kai Jaeger. After fans voted this the winner of Cricket Australia's It's Your Design competition, it's going to be worn by the men and the women. You can grab a copy of this, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you grab one? Shop.cricket.com.au is once the place to go. If once you want again, to get once again, we could tell that you were reading. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't, you put it on back? Why don't you put it on the back of the shirt? Time now. <laughs> Time now for Mix Multi. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a cracker tonight. Get right. on board. I've got a good feeling about this right. one. You've but... finished it, haven't you? finished it now? <laughs> <laughs> I may have been <laughs> finishing it in the commercial break. <laughs> but oh, that said, uh, here we go. I am confident. OK, first up. <laughs> here we go. Now, it's important for an umpire <laughs> to be impartial. But this guy may not have followed the brief after this drop catch. Have a look at the umpire. Oh, nuts and edge. Oh, he's put him down. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be doing that. You're not supposed to give it a... <laughs> I'd like to wager that that was the first time ever in the history of the game that the umpire has sent something up for review. <laughs> You can't have it, but how about you have the the first wicket of the first Ashes match will be caught, and I'll give you a dollar forty of those odds. I'll take it. Oh, no. Let's keep motoring while we're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ride the wave. Okay. Ride the wave. Oh, here, mate. This, is, this is all the way to the shore. Uh, now keep an eye. <laughs> keep an eye on this wicket keeper uh, as he uses an unusual method to run out the batter. Um, there it is. It's gone to the outfield. There's one run. It, watch the keeper. In comes the ball and Wooshka. Whoa. He has, oh, uh, with the pot. I'd like to wager that move is known in the business as in off the brown. <laughs> No, As I Nick... said, it was a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a long one. Can't have it, but how about, to, how about you take Arsenal to beat Manchester... Oh, Arsenal to beat Manchester United <laughs> in the UPL. Oh, I'm no. going to give you $3.70. What well, do you reckon? Well done. Take it. Yep, right yep, let's go. Third leg. This is the premiership leg. See, see if you can spot whose car this batsman has hit with his six. See if there's a giveaway here. Uh, batsman, watch as it going. Oh, dear. No. <laughs> Now, the, the signal six, usually a happy moment for a batsman. No. <laughs> I'd like to wager that that guy is really happy he took out the third party fire and hookshot insurance package. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, yes. you, you, you can't celebrate. You can't have it, but how about you take Cardiff to beat Sheffield United and I'll give you a uh, car, uh, $3.30. What do you reckon? I like it. All right, let's boot this baby home. Uh, Shane Warne, we know, uh, last year released his fragrance, fragrance uh, SW23. Uh, his commercial, I thought, was very distinctive. Fragrance. Yep. SW23, or full title, SW23 variant. <laughs> uh, now, I, I, 
I love the scent, but I have to say, I think I prefer, and I'd like to wager, <laughs> that Lenny Pascoe's is better. Debut fragrance. <laughs> He's wow. That is actually Lenny Pesco. Pesco. That is Lenny Pesco. And when you think of <laughs> fast bowlers captaining Australia, he would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Pesco. You definitely can't have whatever it is that you wanted. Uh, but how about you take <laughs> Cologne? I did earlier. What if you take Cologne to beat Nuremberg Ice Tigers in the German Ice Hockey League? Why not? There was such a thing. Bag it up. Uh, what have we got? $1.73. Let's look at what it's paying. 29.50. If you like Let's to look at Mixed Multi, jump on the sports bet Come app. On. Look for the multi in the have Mega Bets section of the app. And remember, whatever you do, gamble responsibly. Rod, Rod Marsh and Dennis Lilly are on it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere when we come back. The last shout. <laughs> uh, is brought to you by Carlton Zero. Rewrite the rules. Time for the last shout here on the Ashes special uh, of the front bar. During the first test, not sure what day it's going to happen, but finally up at the Gabba, they're going to be unveiling a statue. One of the great Queenslanders, well, Alan Border, yeah, is well, going to be remembered forever up there with a statue that I live uh, long beyond all of us. So well done and about time. Have we seen the statue? Mm -mm. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry to, sip. So, sorry to interrupt the host of the show who's been caught having no, a sip. No, we, we see it for the first time when it gets unveiled. I'll give you one thing that's guaranteed. Right. It won't be smiling. <laughs> well, that's that's, that's the only point. thing we know for sure. Good point. It won't be. This is why we're doing uh, last shouts. You mind I just give a shout out to a friend of mine who's got a, who's got a book out, by the way. It'd be oh. a great, you know, if Christmas is coming up and. Oh. Uh, you said, you said camera one, didn't you, Serge? No worries. Over here. It's, um, it's uh, Adam Zwar's book, uh, 12 Summers, and it's just about being a lifelong uh, cricket fan, Australian cricket fan, and uh, I just wanted to give you a shout-out because yeah. it's, uh, coming, Christmas is coming up and something for the... Have you, have you read it? Oh, look, I started it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Adam wouldn't mind me saying it's not, it's not a page-turner. <laughs> Big, a... big, large font was a good idea. <laughs> um, and, you know, anyway, get, get, it, get it now. Or you could just, don't, if you wait, it'll, it'll be discounted. For <laughs> I actually, I, th I think he's having the book launch at a petrol station to save time. <laughs> anyway, 12 summers. Go and get it. That's it. We are done and dusted. Uh, it's been great to have you with us right throughout the year, no matter where you've been. Have a lovely Christmas. We'll be back uh, in the new year for the Winter Olympics. We've got a show coming up there. But everybody be safe. Everybody be happy to you Cheers. two fellas and all the crew and everybody who's uh, got everything to do with the show. Couldn't do it without a lot of you. Be safe, be merry, and we'll see you in the new year.